Here is the tool post on my lathe. I recently had an accident where I crashed the tool post into the spinning chuck of my lathe and I broke things. Let's take a look. Here is the tool post cam stud. This locks the tool in place on the tool post. If you look at the bottom flange, you can see a chunk has been taken out. Finding a replacement turned out to be very difficult, so I'm going to make my own. This project will be a fast one, but who doesn't enjoy a quickie? I found that depressing the piston and pulling up releases these studs. Then I measured all the dimensions that I'd need. It's mainly cylindrical with a hex and a few eccentric features. I'll be using this 1045 medium carbon steel for its strength and a thanks to Craig's workshop for sending me this material. So I'm off to a great start. I forgot to tighten my lathe chuck. Whoops. But once I tightened it up, I was back in action. I need to turn an eccentric section here. So I'll offset the part in the forge or chuck and reference the dial indicator. I'm taking light cuts due to the stick out and the lack of tailstock support. Now I need to turn the eccentric at the top flange. This is set at 90 degrees to the previous eccentric feature. So I'll dial the part back on centre and then I'll offset it the other way. The large offset was a bit off-putting, but the operation was simple enough. I then squared up the corner with a parting tool, and this operation was then complete. I dialed the part back on centre so I could plunge a parting tool in and form the groove that holds the lathe tool. This is a critical measurement to set the lathe tools correct, so I marked it, and then I finished with the two pass method. I then parted it off and said goodbye to the excess material. The hex is a simple enough process if you have a mill and a collet block. I like to initially take two light passes on two opposing faces, measure this across flats measurement, and then cut off the remainder. And then all the machining was complete. I then cold blued off camera and left the stud in oil overnight. Before the cold bluing, I sandblasted the non-critical top surfaces for a better finish and everything else was wrapped up in a thick layer of tape so I didn't alter these dimensions. And now it's time to test my stud out. It fits nicely into the tool post and feels just as smooth as the original studs. And here you can see how it moves the piston to pull the tool into the tool post. A quick test in this 1045 steel shows that the tool is rigidly locked in place. I'm going to inspect this tool post at the surface plate and determine how accurate it ended up. I zeroed the indicator on the existing stud and then I compared to my new stud. Turns out my stud is 30 microns higher than the existing studs, but this stud will go on the boring bar side of the tool post, and I like my boring tool slightly higher. It's called raising the bar. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't crush your lathe.